Hello, and welcome to another episode of Somewhat Accurate History, a podcast where we vaguely remember the history of various countries. Apparently, Wales is not a country. Hey everybody, welcome back to Somewhat Accurate History. So, we're going to just jump right into this because we already have an intro and I don't have to say shit. So, Tad, now we just previously talked about the 30th time Russia went to shit, we're going to make the sequel, the 31st time Russia went to shit. So, I kind of talked about him already, but I want to give him his own full episode. We're going to talk about motherfucking Stalin himself. Because I want to do a tiny bit where he was kind of, he became the leader and was kind of becoming a gigantic asshole, but let's... Let's step back a little bit. Let's let's get really into this 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 figure, this this character, this absolute supervillain of a human being. <laughs> so, the first thing I needed to find out about Stalin, because I never really was was told this, is why what what made him so evil? Like when I went back to Ivan the Terrible, he had this whole fucking like dramatic ass backstory, right? Stalin didn't really have a dramatic backstory. All I can really think about of why he turned out so bad is he, he was like a farmer, just kind of how Mao was before he rose to power, and his wife died, and that's pretty much it. And then Stalin became evil as fuck. After he got recruited by Lenin and did his whole bullshit, Lenin himself called Stalin a thug. Remember, remember how I mentioned that Lenin was starting to not like Stalin that much, and he liked Trotsky more during the whole... Because he was uh, looking at Stalin, he's like, oh, you're just comically evil. Yeah. You are Russia's Gendo Ikari. Hey, Gendo's wife died too, and then he went fucking insane. Same thing. So wait, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm going to spoil this for everyone else, but um, Stalin's just going to force the entire population of Russia into a robot, right? <laughs> he's going to start the uh, third impacto. Alex yes. doesn't watch uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion because he's a fucking loser. It's true, because I don't care. Okay, so what, what, what was I even talking about? Oh, yeah, I was talking about Stalin. I forgot. Ted, reminder, yeah, I just reminder, I took Ted, your train of thought and I threw it off the rails. Reminder that Ted is the one who brings up anime into this podcast, not me. Who's the real weeb, everybody? As, as I say, as the other night I spent like an hour talking about Vocaloids instead of working at work. Anyway, back to Stalin. So... So, 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 We were talking about how Lenin died. Stalin immediately assumed power. So Stalin, you know, just immediately said, like, yep, he uh, died and gave me everything. And everyone was just like, yeah, okay, we believe you. So, when Stalin, you know, set his fat ass on that sweet, golden fucking communist throne, he never got rid of his original title of the general secretary. He liked that title. Even though it was just a, mm-hmm, desk job, it allowed him to have so much control over every little detail. Because he was supposed to, you know, under Lenin, schedule all the appointments and keep all the books. Stalin immediately realized scheduling all the appointments and keeping the books lets him only schedule the appointments he likes and only keeps the records he likes. So, over the course of uh, working under Lenin, he started putting supporters in the party. So it was so when I say everyone believed him, all that was left were people that liked him and would believe him. You see? So he wormed his way through to pretty much every part of the government. I went, okay, I'm going to put my guy here. You're getting out of here. This guy is going here because he was able to schmooze his way through so easily. Yes, yes. He, again, keeping the records was incredibly useful in a specific situation. So, And what's the um, what's the time frame here for uh, his his rise to power and all that? I recall correctly, it was... I uh, fuck, I didn't write that down. Oh, shit. It was, it was 1920. Wait, wait, uh, 1920. Okay. When... Uh, Lenin, Early 1900s. Yeah, when Lenin died. So th- this whole this whole reign, by the way, lasted about over 30 years. He he was in power for a while, and so let me set the stage of uh, what it was like living in this situation. You see, Stalin looked around the world, and he you're gonna see a lot of parallels between this and Ivan, by the way. But remember, he is quoted saying that he was inspired by Ivan the Terrible. So that's why we did that episode a long time ago, and you'll, you'll see the, the parallels, uh, parallels uh, as, we're, as we're talking about them. So, yeah, he looks around the world, there's a little fucking, like, you know, owl head turn around the entire world, and he, he realizes, man, Russia is not nearly as cool as the other nations right now. Like, he sees how they've got, like, all these farms, like, they, they've kind of power-gamed the farming system, right, with, like, nutrients and shit. 
and they have factories, and they're pumping out, like, cool guns. He sees, he looks over, they still have regular-ass, like, ancient peasants ruling over, like, like uh, living on the land. And he's like, bitch, it is the 1900s. Why do we still have, you guys got, what, what, what is that right there? He's like, it's a peasant, sir. He smacks him. Bitch, why do we still have that? Get rid of that. So here was the genius plan. He would get all the peasants together, get all the really wealthy ones, air quote, wealthy peasant, all, all the, the big earners, and killed them the all. The peasants that had two. Oh, shit. Yeah, I cut you off, didn't he? he I was going to say the peasants who had two sickly oxes. <laughs> the, peasants, the peasants that had just one cow too many and would kill them, and the ones who didn't feel like killing, shove into a gulag. Gulags were forced labor cats. They're... Him and Hitler had a lot in common. They just had forced labor camps over there. Just sent them all the way out in the fucking boony-ass nowhere. Just fucking hit rocks all day. All right. Why? Just because they were poor and farmers? No, 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 no. They were the good farmers. He had to get rid of the good ones because this was a genius plan, Tad. So here, here's the here, 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 here's the plan. Here's the plan. So, with all, you can hear the paper turning. With all the fucking farmers out of the way, he now has the shittier peasants. He is now going to... Specifically get them all together and work on specific big farmlands. They don't own their own land. They don't make their own food They all work on these like government mandated squares and all the food they produced would have been taken by the government and then you know Passed around in the typical communist fashion because because you know how it's how I told you it's about the distribution of uh, food and resources based on your fucking uh, status and uh, hierarchy in the uh, society so the farmers and he got rid of the good farmers because the good farmers would go, hey, that's really dumb. I want to keep my land and I know how to make better products. Well, like, uh, gulag. So the reason he got rid of the good farmers is because he wanted the good farmers land to make the government squares on. Why he had to get rid of the farmers themselves didn't seem like much, made much sense to me. But Maybe he just wanted to immediately nip in the bud. <laughs> Get it? Because they're farmers. He wanted to nip any potential revolution in the bud because he was just stealing from them. I remember, remember, Lenin didn't like it. This guy he thought it was a huge thug. He's already proven Lenin right. Just letting everyone know that. So anyway, 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 he called these guys the Kulaks. And that was the head peasants that he killed. All the other peasants were just shitters. <laughs> they didn't call them serfs anymore, but they might as well have been. So, this did not work very well. Surprising. All of these shittier, unskilled serfs, uh, that's, 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 again, that's pretty much what they were, you know, they don't say that, never got to eat the food that they made. As soon as you spend, like, all fucking day working in the field, you're like, here are your fucking beats, a fucking government soldier in his big green-ass uniform walks up, smacks you, takes it, and walks away. And then you just sit there and curl up into a ball and starve and die. And uh, over 10 million people died during this. How were, well, I was about to say, how were 10 million people even alive in Russia? And then I remembered it's really huge. Oh, it's so. big. It was the 1900s, so it was pretty much all populated at this point. It's Except, massive. like, probably Siberia. Siberia is probably just as populated now as it was back then. Yeah, there, it's there just are people a fucking living, wasteland. There are people living in Siberia, just, uh, you know... Alex, people. please. That's like saying there are people who are living in Canada. I was going to say, that's like saying there are people that live in Australia. We don't call them people. So, so another thing he did is, uh, you're probably wondering, okay, he's still had a lot of farmers. How did this fuck up so badly? I said he got rid of the skilled ones. So, I almost skipped this over. Half of the farmers that were still left, he grabbed, much like how Mao did, grabbed them, threw them into factories to massively increase productivity. So he... He removed the good farmers and cut the other farmers in half and removed all the land and then took all their food and then everybody died. And again, I'm wondering why Stalin thought this was a good idea, but what he was ever going to admit he was wrong, because if you said he was wrong, he would pull out a gun and just shoot you. So, and everyone was dying. So here's the next thing. The factory workers. So, you at least got mandated food as a factory worker, so you couldn't possibly starve to death. However, there's another way you could die as a factory worker. So... To increase productivity, because it's you know, all product, 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 productivity. That's what he Can wanted. Can I he guess? Wanted, he wanted Can I guess? Be, sure, sure, by all means. Okay, so the way to increase productivity is that you could just stick your arm directly in the machine and suffer serious wounds. How many of them just got their arms ripped off by the fucking machinery? Not as many as you think. You're, you're off base, unfortunately. You weren't actually that close. Damn it. So here, here's what he did. He, so he wanted to be like Mao, because now Mao kick-started everything, and, and Mao worked for you know, one whole year. We talked about Mao a long time ago. He wanted to be just like that. So 
he made a bullshit quota system. Like, say, you know, Mr. Factory fucking, you know, Grigory Factoritsky. <laughs> you gotta make 300 bars of iron or you get the gun. And obviously, he can only make, like, 200 a day. So, bam, he's dead. Grigory failed to make his quota, so he just gets shot. So scoop his body off, clean the blood off the fucking, like, conveyor belt. Get the next guy in. Get Jimmy in here. Jimmy, make 300 things of iron today. He's like, uh, 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 I, I did it. He's like, okay, here's your sweet potato. You get to live today. And then he sends him home. And he's going to do that exact same thing tomorrow. <laughs> Whoops, 299. Below quota. Bang. And he'll scoop his butt body up, clean the fucking conveyor belt off. All right, here comes Timmy. And uh, that's what it was like to be a factory worker under Stalinist regime. So it, uh, it equally sucked there, too. And uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the bigger uh, cities had, had their uh, food, but all the other smaller towns didn't. I actually showed you a picture of this. Being a peasant sucked balls. There's just a nice picture right there of just a couple of peasants starving to death for you to see. It was common sight under the Stalinist re- regime if you weren't in a big fucking city. If you didn't live and in And I'll fucking- post this. I'll have these images in the description. But yeah, it is straight up just three people laying on the sidewalk, completely emaciated. Yeah, it sucked balls for everyone involved. Unless, of course, you lived in, you know, if you were in the upper class in the actual party itself. Speaking of the party itself, let's talk about the goons. Stalin, like every good supervillain, had a team, had a, had a league of evil with him. We got motherfucking Vasily Blokin. We'll just call him Vasily, Vasily for short. So Vasily, so call Vasily Blokin? He's the bloat. He's 500 feet tall, and if you pop him, he'll explode and send putrid gas all over the room. So, Stalin liked this guy. As scary <laughs> he as He would that like sound. the gas man. As scary as that might sound, he is Stalin's hand-picked executioner <laughs> oh no so here's here's what uh you know crack his knuckles what vasily would do he had a dream had an ambitious quota he wanted to get at least 300 executions per day per day per well, i should say night but yeah because he would do it at night but like you know every fucking day he wanted to get at least 300 traitors killed Within the Soviet Union. You're probably wondering... Okay. (laughs) How long does it take to execute someone? Let's say... Let's be generous and say it takes five minutes to get it all ready. Well... 300 times five. Hold on. 300 times five divided by 60. (laughs) Uh, Okay, well... uh, Yeah, I mean, that's that's 25 hours if it takes five minutes. Which means you'd have to be really efficient with executing people. So check it out, Ted. Would, he actually had the math down himself. It took him two. God damn it! it took him two and a half minutes to do it. What? Okay, so here's here's what he did. Here's what he did. Oh, okay, me, bullets do travel fast. Okay, so here's how Vasily did it. He wanted to be efficient. He didn't care about the looks. He, <laughs> this is the, this is the Russian equivalent of how it's made. They just, <laughs> <laughs> how it's killed. <laughs> so that, that really calm how it's made voice is like, well, you see, they line up all the factory workers and then they dig a ditch. Each shovel full of dirt happens at the exact same time for maximum efficiency. So you're not far off with that. So we'll get to that in a minute. So they mathed out human suffering. Because remember, that's the thing Lenin hated most was hope. So so <laughs> Vasily, Vasily had the system packed out. So he worked with this other guy named Leventi. We'll call him Leventi B. Leventi is this fat motherfucker, and I will give him his little his little segment in like a couple minutes. I'll get right to him. But Vasily and him had this had uh, these hired goons. You know, the goons had goons. This this chain of command that would rock around, looking you know, scanning with their fucking binoculars, looking for traitors. We made a joke about this earlier, where it's like, ah, it's a beautiful sunny day today, and the guy's like, eh, it's kind of cloudy. Just here they come the fucking the shadow guys. They come out of the fucking woodwork, grab you, drag you away. If you had any like negative thought about anything, or it could be possibly construed as a negative thought towards the Stalin regime, you're gone. You're just disappeared. You're erased. Done so. And then in comes Vasily, the eraser. So the goons would write down whatever bullshit they they they, they grabbed you for. Now out of ten times it was bullshit. They just wanted to kill you to meet that fucking three hundred quota. And then Vasily had a big suitcase. It had shit tons 
of German Walter Model 2.25 ACP pistols. I don't want to be a gun nerd, but I got to write that name down for once. I also think it's Walther, but whatever. It's a bunch of German guns. Because W's in German, uh, in German language, are pronounced as a V. Oh, be Walther. Yeah, you're right. There you go. We correct yourself. I took German class for four years in high school. Guten Tag, mein Fräuleins. You a Nazi, bro? <laughs> we have fun. No, here. dude. I j- listen, Alex. I just think they have cool uniforms. Ted, don't ironically say that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on moving on so we have this big suitcase full of pistols so here's what we do you know they get say it's a jimmy got fucking caught being a negative nancy they write him down you know, slap him around a little bit put him in, into this fucking padded room that was sloped so all the blood would drip down to one area for easy cleanup it was padded Jesus so you Christ. Couldn't, hear any, couldn't hear any sounds now, it's like a fucking dwarf fortress contraption. This is where this shit comes from, Ted. This is where all that creepy shit in movies comes from. It comes from this like whole era, this whole 30-year time span. So, originally it was designed for more long tortures, as you could probably see, but efficiency, doesn't matter. He come in with like an executioner outfit, open his suitcase, just pull out a gun and shoot him. And then, you know, scoop the body up, clean the fucking blood down. Next guy, walk in there, he, you know, blindfold would face the wall, pull it, you know, next gun in his suitcase, bam, he's dead. Next guy, suitcase, bam. He would, efficiency. He didn't care about the theatrics of this part. And that was Vasily. I could see him just being like, oh, God, here we go. Like, hucking his pants up like a Midwestern person, like, sitting in a chair. Like, just pointing the gun in, like, all right, get in position. So just getting tired. He's like, oh, man, standing up all day. Oh, no, that's the real torture. Bam. All right. Next one. All right. So unfortunately, he was not able to consecutively make the 300 executions per night quota, even with his efficient system, just because if they did that, they'd run out of people to kill. So we had to cut it down a little bit after like a week. But that was a lot of people he killed in the week. Just want to let you know that. So <laughs> next goon, next goon, next goon. This guy, I want to give his own little thing. We mentioned Leventi. Leventi here was the man above Vasily. He was Stalin's... Okay, how do I say this? Stalin called him my Himmler. (laughs) So, this guy might just be one of the most evil psychopaths ever. So, we're going to talk about him for like five minutes. So... He was the guy who ordered each specific killing. So Vasily was taking orders from this guy. Now Vasily kind of made his own system. He, he went on his own little thing. But he would say get like his three or four like goons, right? His, his head hunches and their funny red star hats. He had a list. This is actually uh, shown in The Death of Stalin in kind of a really funny way. So I'm just going to kind of uh, see a fake quote that movie. Where he's like, all right. This one, kill this one, make this next one watch, then kill him next. Yeah, you know, take this, here's theirs. All right, uh, this one, kill him in the church, throw his body in the river, make sure you take a picture, okay, and uh, take care of this one, here you go. And these, ah, just figure it out yourself. He would specifically give orders to each guy for each killing. He had this whole fucking thing, we have notes of it, of every specific, it was like a death note. He was the fucking guy from, what's his name, Light? Like Kagami, I think is how you fucking say his name? He this was just dude. writing down each way he wanted every single person to die. and he- If you were writing a movie and you had this <laughs> character in it, I'd be like, okay, all right, what is this, a comedy? Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, 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 that's the Soviet Russian under Stalin. So, 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 so. Another thing he did is he, well, I should say is that he loved this job. He loved the power. He was, like, rubbing his nipples about how much he fucking loved. Because think about it. He could just (laughs) write your name down dead in that specific way. Again, just like the Death Note, it went right to his fucking head really fucking quick. Did he have the evil anime guy glasses? He did actually have glasses, so yes. So, another thing he did is he would use this to have his way with women. He would drive around in this big fucking black evil-looking car... Right, just the super villain. Pull up to the nice ladies and uh, say, hey, I could write your name in my death note and kill you. Fuck me or die. So they didn't have much of a fucking choice. So you take them to that fucking creepy ass padded room and just fuck their brains out. He would also uh, take underage girls too. I mean, I would point that out. He was just being completely evil about it. 
And afterwards, what he would do is he would make the soldiers give him this bouquet of flowers as a signifying that it was like it was consensual in air quotes, even though it obviously wasn't. He was, you know, putting a gun yeah. to their head. And, you know, if they didn't take the flowers, they would get shot. So, again, it was very, very, uh, very dark time for everybody involved. And Stalin, despite how much he loved his little Himmler, he always told his daughter, because Stalin loved his daughter, uh, Svetlana, if you'd ever heard of her. He loved her to Never death. have. Yeah. So he told Svetlana, never go near a black car in this fucking country, because probably this guy is. So I want to point something out. As much as he loved him, he didn't even think his own daughter was safe around him. Just putting that out there. So Levente was just fucking insane. We'll get to him in a bit. Uh, again, and, and we'll get to him again in a little while. But that's all you need to know for now. So, back to Stalin himself. So Stalin, well, he was you know, exuding his power and T-posing everyone, having his goons do the 300 executions per night. He had another problem on his hands. You see, there was this fucking asshole that people liked a little bit more than him. His name is Sergei. Sergei Kirov. <laughs> I, thought, I really thought you were going to say, there's this asshole they liked a little bit more than them. His name was Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin had to purge Satan. No. Kirov was running this whole new party called the Leninist Party. I'm sorry, the Leningrad Party. Now, Leningrad, okay. we told you, was the, na- was the name of St. Petersburg was renamed to Leningrad. And I joked about it, but what, Stalingrad was a different city. Someone called me out. I was just fucking with you. I wanted to see if you were paying attention. That, that, I was just fucking with all of you. But uh, the Leningrad party was like, hey, guys, Stalin's kind of whack. Can we be in power and, like, maybe not have everyone starve every day and kill 300 people a night? Maybe if, if you had to have 300 executions a night, this country's not too perfect. Stalin looks over at him. Which just doesn't say a fucking word and just frowns. He's not going to live for very long. So Kirov, they did this popularity like poll. They did this little uh, convention because the Communist Party has to do this uh, reevaluation every couple of years and make it pretend that they're actually still a Communist Party and not a dictatorship at this point. Because remember, uh-huh. Stalin's not the leader. He's still the general secretary. He just has the power. It's important. He never declared himself dictator and he never called himself the supreme overlord. He's still just the secretary. So they have to pretend they still care about the rules. So the popularity poll comes in. Kirov only gets three down votes. Three negative marks. Stalin gets a hundred. So Kirov is suspiciously croaks the next day. He is just found dead from suicide. Very clearly a suicide. He just couldn't handle those three negative down votes, and it just got to his head and he died. So Stalin... <laughs> he, would, get, he committed suicide with a shotgun blast twice to the back of his head. He, got, he committed suicide with two German Walther model bullets in his head. Stalin was very clearly behind it, but he told the public, Oh my fucking God, there's a traitor within the Communist Party who's trying to get us. Well, guys, ch Looks like we're going to have to make some cuts. A hundred downvote cuts, apparently. So he called this the Great Purge. He went and got <laughs> every single fucking person with any credential of power, any smidge, any tiny positive thing that could possibly make them have any kind of authority over any goon. <clears throat> I did a little thing with my thumb. Dead executed, murdered, and those he didn't feel like killing into a gulag. He just had to remove them. Out, gone, den. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the fucking the battle that was the, you know, just gunning down everybody he could, you look around, all that's left is Stalin, another guy who, just, who, who also just, you know, suspiciously died of being sick, and he, he, you know, he's got his gun, he's like looking around, scanning, and that's it. It's Stalin and his, like, his couple of goons that were loyal to him, like Vasily, I mentioned, and Levente. You also have guys like Malenkov and a guy named Khrushchev. Those who know history already know who Khrushchev's going to be. We'll get to him in a bit. So, Malenkov was a sort of ambitious little guy who had a lot of big dreams, but would always kind of keep his voice quiet around Stalin, you know? He, 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 he I was don't like. I don't like the idea of he was always a little ambitious guy under Stalin's reign. That makes me very uncomfortable. Alex. Oh yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about him. But then Khrushchev was a kind of a weirdo. Nobody really knew why Khrushchev was so 
powerful because he didn't do anything. But <laughs> did he have the sharring gun? But everyone assumed he was only there because Stalin thought he was funny. He was the communist class clown. Khrushchev actually was very proud of this role, and whenever he had a joke that made Stalin laugh, 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 laugh. yeah, I'm laugh. I'm on my fucking accent here. Make him laugh. He would tell his wife that night, and they would write it down. So he had a huge joke book of every single joke that made Stalin laugh. Laugh. Damn it. I, oh, that was my fucking accent all of a sudden. I'm a fucking accent. Uh, here, Alex, I think I know what the number one rated joke in that book was. Uh, what happened to the Minecraft who tried to walk on lava? He was destroyed. Fuck off. History repeats itself, Alex. <laughs> this, now, this little bit of mentioning is actually... Uh, is it, Give me what, <laughs> Alex, you cannot tell me you did not find out some of those fucking jokes. Well, the thing is, is that... <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one of the jokes that just said, food. <laughs> so, I didn't look it up because I didn't care, unfortunately. <laughs> what? All right, literally, okay, hold on, I'm putting the podcast on hold. <laughs> uh, Stalin joke book. It's only a joke. Oh, no, that's a different joke. Uh, Russian political jokes, Wikipedia. Wikipedia <laughs> is the funniest thing on the planet. So uh, <laughs> let's see here. Stalin reads his report to the party Congress. Suddenly someone sneezes. Who sneezed? Silence. First row, on your feet, shoot him. They are shot. And he asks again, who sneezed, comrades? No answer. Second row, on your feet, shoot him. They are shot too. Wait, well... Who sneezed? At last, a sobbing cry resounds in the Congress Hall. It was me. Me. Bless you, comrade. Then Stalin walked on TNT and was destroyed. <laughs> As I was trying to say, Khrushchev was the, was the funny man, was the jokey man. No one really respected him. And they've got Levente, I mentioned, the psychopath. There's also this guy named Troitsky. Troitsky was the guy that Lenin liked more, remember? Stalin fucking hated him. And had him completely removed from power and exiled to Mexico. And then he suspiciously died of a bullet wound to his head from a Soviet-era gun in the 40s. Interesting. Anyway, that, that's, that's the leadership and that's the kind of Russia you lived in if you were a citizen. But there was more to Stalin's regime than just, you know, running the country into the fucking ground and into starvation, right? We gotta talk about the thing that I, I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I know everyone else is... We gotta talk about war. So, one magnificent day, a very interesting, loud-spoken individual waltzed in to the party hall, watched into the, walked into the Presidium. A man with a funny little mustache named Adolf fucking Hitler. Adolf Hitler was like, yo, Stalin, I got a proposition for you. You see... With and... With... Fuck, I was gonna do the proposition thing. With and for how to... And then he fucking started doing Fortnite dances. That's the Hitler we created in our podcast universe. Adolf Spittler, the greatest rapper in Germany, went up to... <laughs> Fuck off. Went up to Brosev Stalin, the only rapper left in Russia. <laughs> and he said... Okay. And he, I thought, no, go ahead. Go do your, do your little thing. I'm sure you got more jokes and those weren't the only two parts of it. In Khrushchev's joke book... <laughs> okay okay so anyway Hitler, Hitler slides on up into the DMs and he's like hey buddy I have an evil empire that I'm trying to destroy the world with you have an evil empire too we shouldn't rub our evil empires together sometime because we will have a mutual God. we will have mutual destruction how about we just do it, file this NAP together and sounds like yeah sure I can agree to that they shake hands Hitler pulls him in close grabs his ass and whispers into his ear okay but here's a secret deal the both of us should invade the fuck out of Poland. We should just fuck the shit out of Poland. And Stalin's like, I don't really know about that. So Hitler's like, you can keep whatever you conquer. And Stalin's like, oh, I am so in now. So, so they go to po they go to Poland to stop all these lemon stealing whores. So Poland is. I, I keep mentioning Poland. And we're gonna give you guys a little credit. So Poland was in a real rough spot. I know I kind of repeat myself. This is for the, the people. Poland was a little boy stuck between two sexy-ass milfs. You had Germany on the left and the USSR on the right. Poland was like, man, I sure hope I don't get violated at the end of this book right now. 
You look over to the left, you've got, you know, <laughs> you've got the Nazis just waltzing on over the border, fucking doing push-ups and shit. Look over to the right. Doing the doing the hand thing. Doing the hand thing. You look over to the fucking Hey Hitler, right. you still doing that hand thing? You look over to the right, the fucking the st- <laughs> The Stalinist tanks are doing fucking wheelies and donuts over in Poland. Poland brings up the little phone. Hey, Britain, know how we signed that, like, treaty? You'd help us out in case anything went wrong. Um, things are kind of going wrong. Can you help us? Britain signed that treaty assuming they would never have to do anything. They never thought Hitler would be stupid enough to just start being super aggressive to everyone around. I mean, the whole world's connected. What is he, crazy? So, he calls up Poland. Oof, yikes, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I can't really come and help you today. I'll say, I give you like an airdrop for some guns and shit. Poland's like, dude, really? That's the best you got? And Britain's like, ooh, yeah, I don't know, man. Listen, I'll, I can give you listen, some I'm, airdrops. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a tunnel. Oh, and it hangs up on him. So Poland was in a real rough spot where... Uh, uh, the Nazis never declared war, but the, the Nazis just kind of started marching in and killing everybody. So the Poles were like, hold the line! And they were getting immediately murdered. Okay, back up! Okay, back up some more! Uh, back up! Uh, we lost the capital! Uh, d- uh, scatter the wind! Oh, thank God, Russia's here! Hello, Slavic ally, you're here to help us! The, the fucking Soviets pull out their AKs. Ah, fuck, Russia's here. So Poland got completely demolished, and it was wiped off the face of the earth. They got better, don't worry. So Stalin takes a big knife on the map, carves this big chunk. You know, puts a big, like, circle over, like, Berlin and shit. He's like, all right. Mm-mm-mm. Thanks, Hitler, my great comrade. And Hitler's like, hey, thanks, my friend. I love you, Stalin. They hug, they kiss, they walk the separate ways. Hitler's like, I fucking hate this guy. Oh, I hate him so much, this fucking piece of <laughs> shit. I'm not inviting him to the Axis power meeting. So He thinks he's so cool with his chiseled ass. He thinks he's so cool with that fucking mustache. It's like three times my size. I'll show him. So the Axis powers is the League of Evil pretty much in World War II. You had Hitler, you had <laughs> you had Mussolini, and then you had the Japanese military. <laughs> now, you notice I didn't say the Japanese emperor, because the emperor really didn't have any power at this point in time. The emperor was in this really fun fun spot in Japan, brief Japanese history. Uh, Japanese military is like, hey, let's invade China and just kind of become a massive empire. The emperor was like, well, hold the fuck phone, fu- hold the fucking phone, bro. I don't want to just be horribly aggressive for no reason. The general kicked him in the fucking nuts, slapped him in the face, and put a gun on him and said... Yeah, okay, so we're in power now, and uh, they just invaded China. So Hardcore History has a uh, really good series about, uh, I think it was called The Rising Sun, which is about uh, Japan and China fighting. Uh, both sides in that conflict are pretty fucked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I argue that if you're talking about just pure evil, the Japanese military during this whole imperialist like era is probably one of the most evil militaries I've seen because they had literally no laws. Because the only person who, who was in charge of them just got Wo Shambowed out of power. He's still on the th- <laughs> he's still on the throne, but he's got a, like there's a guy sitting behind the throne with a gun right to his fucking head, right? He's just pretending he's in power. The generals all are all just doing whatever the fuck they want at this point. But anyway. So they're, they're doing their whole thing. And even though they're allied with each other, Japan's all the way over there. Japan's not really going to help Hitler, like, do anything, right? They're not really going to, like, fly all the way over there and, like, give him reinforcements. So really, up in Europe in World War II, all you really had was Hitler and Mussolini. Now, Mussolini, as goofy as his name is, was another fascist dictator of Italy. Now, you've probably heard Hitler, 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 Nazi Germany, Nazi Germany. You never hear anything about fascist Italy. Why is that, Tad? Brief tangent. Uh, was the U.S. was the U.S. not directly involved with it? Because that would be my assumption, so that we just never fucking hear about it over here. No, we were. We were. We fought some Italians. No, what, what happened was is that Italy was so fucking incompetent at everything they did that everyone just they kept, kept trying to shoot us with spaghetti noodles. They were so bad. Everyone just kind of laughs at them, and no one really cares about how evil they were because they were like bulk and skull. So, <laughs> so <laughs> oh, Alex, that is probably incredibly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I well, okay. I'm sorry. I'm making fun of your fascist dictator, everybody. I'm sure you all love him dearly. So. <laughs> So, 
they were, here's the short of it, because we're getting a little off of Russia here. The short of it, they were very uh, underfunded and undermanned for everything. They had shitty weapons. Uh, tank fans would go on for three hours about how their tanks were ill-equipped and ill-designed, etc., etc., etc. Basically, they just had shitty gear trying to go up against, like, endgame level mobs. They were fucked. So basically, it was just Hitler. And so Stalin was like, hey, Hitler, my friend who helped me take over Poland, well, you know, half of Poland, can I come to the Axis Hall and become the Axis Powers? Hitler's like, slap his head away. No, I hate communism and I hate you. Fuck you. See the fuck in your fucking red zone, you little shit. So Hitler cut off probably the only good ally he could have ever had. Stalin will remember this. So after Stalin was done purging everything, Hitler was losing the war because, again, he didn't really have any good uh, capable allies. He had, Why would I say it like that? That, that implies that, like, good things about them. Why, why would I word it like that? Anyway. I don't know, Alex. You seem to be subconsciously... Uh, Alex, what's your opinion on the Nazi uniforms? <laughs> oh, dude, it's pretty fucking swag. Dude, damn. All right. So anyway, now that we've officially been canceled from... No, Germany, no, no. This Nazi flag is just because I have German heritage. <laughs> Okay. Now listen, I have this rebel flag because I just appreciate the ideas of the South, not because I'm a racist. <laughs> Ignore. Also, check out the nuts I have on my truck. <sighs> Suck on it, snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a bumper sticker that says honk if you're furry. Hey, Nazi furs are a real thing. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I am very aware. Okay. This is where they came from. So back at Stalin, Stalin just got fucking slapped in the face by his one true love. So he's a little hurt by this. And, you know, everything's kind of going to shit in Russia. I mean, he had to kill a bunch of people. There's no one left. And uh, he's kind of lonely now. You say starting to go to shit. It's been going to shit since uh, the 1600s. <laughs> the 1500s. But uh, Hitler was losing. And he got desperate. He was like, okay, Mussolini's fucking up. Japan's just fucking doing their own thing, not answering my calls. He looks up with his telescope. Japan's just like spinning around, shooting machine guns into the air, juggling fucking... I'm not going to actually say that war crime. Uh, they, they, uh, we're just doing horrible <laughs> things. The raping man king. I mean, you could just say it. So I'm going to say they were, they were juggling newborn babies and then uh, having them land on their bayonets. They were playing a game with it. If they dropped and their brains fell out, they would just start laughing. Remember how I said they were just evil? So they yeah, were just there's, being uh, here's here's another here's another better podcast. Uh, last podcast, uh, last fuck. Now you got me fucking up words. Uh, last podcast on the left did a really cool <laughs> episode on the, uh, Japanese war crimes. It's pretty cool if you just want to lose a little bit of faith in humanity. So defend that, weeaboos. Anyway, moving on. So he's looking over there. They're just committing war crime after war crime, basically making a game of you know who can do more war crimes: them, the USSR, or USSR, or Hitler. So Hitler's like, okay, Mussolini, I need backup. Hey, yo, Mussolini, like, you go to Italy, the fucking palace is just on fire. He's like, all right, so uh, let's see. Let me look at my uh, stocks here. We're really low on oil. He looks over. The, 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 <laughs> the capital in Italy is on fire, and they're running around with like flails that are just spaghetti with meatballs stuck on the end. They're fucking swinging them around they, like a cat of nine tails. They, they, they've got a big pot. Like, oh no, the spaghetti is burning. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, oh, mamma mia. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> my God, Italy. My God, their plumbers are at war. They're overflowing with Koopas. <laughs> oh, mamma mia, sick Kyle. <laughs> Remember, they're fascist. So anyway, I, I... You know what? Actually, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense that Russia and Italy wouldn't get along. Italy has a lot of food. They have a lot of pasta. Anyway, so you can tell... Well, <laughs> I'll make my my, my uh, Italy apology video later. So anyway... <laughs> in defense of what I said about Italy. In defense of Mussolini. Okay, so we're... Back to Stalin. Back to Stalin. So back to Stalin. Quit Stalin. So Hitler was running low on resources because he was because at this point everyone kind of felt bad about the whole leaving Poland to die thing. So everyone's kind of said, "Hey, let's go fight Hitler." Uh, I guess that's a short way of saying it. What Hitler did was he actually pissed everybody off by accidentally bombing fucking uh what was it London? He accidentally just straight up bombed the capital city of fucking England because he was supposed. I to don't think that was an accident. I think that was called the Blitzkrieg, Alex. No, 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 no. What happened was is he was they were the Luftwaffe were told to go for this air force base, then they fucked up and just bombed the the fucking capital city, which then instead of and then Hitler was like, oh shit. 
double down on it. So they turned that mistake into a miracle, and then the fucking London Knights were like, we'll turn this mistake into a miracle, bitch. Fuck you. You want a fucking war? We'll give it to you. And that that horrible thing inspired them to then immediately go to war and just fuck up with Hitler. So Hitler accidentally accidentally brought Berlin into this. So and Berlin, it brought fucking England into this thing. So England's into it, and then America was getting into it. Fucking the French Revolution part three, four, seven, eight was getting into it because they they weren't taking this whole occupation thing well. You know, everything's going to shit, and he's running low on oil. He needs oil stat to fill the fucking tanks, to fill the fucking planes, fill everything. He, looks, he needs to fucking, he needs to play something that says, like, discard three cards from your hand to draw four. Like, he's out of gas. Yeah. So he tells Mussolini to go to Africa and get a bunch of oil. Mussolini fails at this. Okay, plan B. Looks over to Russia. Looks at this NAP. Rips it right up. Just, all right. Alex, the oil that, uh, he failed at getting the oil, but he just came back with a bunch of uh, virgin olive oil. <laughs> We have fun here. We have fun here. So, Mamma Mia. Oh, Mamma Mia. Oh, Mamma Mia Mussolini. So, Hitler, Mamma Mia, Papa Pia. Hitler does the thing that fucked everything up for him. He goes into Russia for oil, and this fucking pissed Stalin off. Stalin was already pissed at him for not letting him in the Axis powers, but now Stalin's pissed that he fucking backstabbed him like this. So he goes up to this place called Kursk. You know, Hitler drives all the tanks up to Kursk. Stalin gets all his tanks up to Kursk. They have this huge fucking fight. This is the largest tank fight in history. <clears throat> so, initially, the communists are losing. They're getting their butts kicked because the Stalin, the Stalins, the Nazis are very efficient fucking military guys because that's basically their whole fucking thing they're just a whole military just they're just evil right they're just fucking soldiers at this point because fascism you know heavily promotes military expansion uh soldiers this soldiers that you, you, you know how it works so yeah they're just blitzing on through they're fucking everybody up and you know Stalin's like shit fuck damn it Ugh. where are the competent generals they're like stalin you killed them all he's like god damn it that's right i did fuck okay uh okay i got an idea because so, he has to he has to do all the shit back home and also lead the entire army on his own too. He's doing everything by himself. He's micromanaging everything. So it's of course it's getting fucked up. So he orders order number two two seven, also known as not one step back. So here was this evil fucking plan. He would get all remember the gulags. He'd get all those fucking stupid prisoners he put in there, round them up, put them in uniforms, and have them act as meat shields. For the Communist Party as they would march forward and then fight the Nazis. And Ugh. if any of those prisoners was trying to run away, they would be shot and gunned down. Not one step back. You could only move forward. All offensive. Do not give any ground. So this didn't work. Because all it did was kill a bunch of more people and waste more ammo. But, lucky for them... The Soviet tank division got their heads out of their asses and managed to sweep around and start fucking up the Panzer division anyway. And the few, like, head army guys left, I don't even want to really call them generals because they sure as shit wouldn't call themselves generals. They said, Stalin, we love you, but please just run the state. Let us do this war thing. We got this, bro. Trust us. Stalin surprisingly agreed and let them do their thing, thus the communists turned it around and pushed the Germans back. Then, of course, winter hit. Everyone loses in Russia on winter. That is Russia's whole shtick. This has happened like 15 times in their history. Some idiot underestimates just how fucking cold it gets in goddamn Russia. Like, they're used to it. They live there. They got their fucking big-ass coats. They're, like, you know, they're kicking back, drinking their vodka. They're, they're ready. They got all winter and just wait for you to fucking freeze, right? They don't care. The fucking Nazis are just like, oh shit, it's cold. Well, let me just die. So, <laughs> so they so they start losing and, and falling back. And Hitler's like, ah, oh, fuck, damn it, fuck, shit, balls. Oh, this is so bad. Because Stalin gets a new idea. He forms. I sent you this picture. I call it the unlikely alliance. He walks up to the Allied forces and says, hey guys, he holds his hand out. Mind if I join in? And so. He joins the Allies. <laughs> they do the Lord of the Rings thing. It's like, never thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. Never How about side by side with a genocidal dictator maniac? 
I, yeah, sure, fuck it, I guess. So, Stalin joins the Allies and becomes officially a <clears throat> good guy, in air quotes. And all of them together, you know, America, England, Russia, France, I guess. You know what I just realized, Alex? What's up? Uh, looking at this image of him sitting with Churchill at the Yalta conference, mm -hmm. uh, they look like Goombas from the live-action Mario Bros. movie. <laughs> They've got really... It was a different type. They got gigantic coats. I wonder if they based those Goombas <laughs> in the Mario movie off this. They probably did. I believe it. So, so, so I, the picture right there, we'll probably put that in the description, but uh, these are all just from Wikipedia. This is just easy. I just grab off, like, Google Images. Just for, these, are, these are just for Ted for visual aids, but if you guys want to look at them, too, by all means... But, uh, giving me visual aids. But uh, thank you. All of them together, you know, even the Nazi fucking army, as uh, big and powerful in air quotes as they were, they can't fucking handle like four armies just fucking closing in on them. They lose. Hitler fucking suicides, and the Nazi regime f collapses. They find the fucking camps. They, you know, they all that happens. Everything goes to shit. Germany just strip collapses and shatters into pieces, and so. They start taking those pieces. So they all are like, okay, let's see. What do we do with Germany now? They're, they're their little conference after the war. You know, they, they, kick, they kick Japan's ass. They fucking slap Mussolini around. You know, every, every, everything's done. The war is finally over. So now they gotta, you know, take the rewards. They're, they're at the meeting, at the table. Stalin walks in, doesn't say a word, takes out his big red pen, draws it on like a huge line across the map. This is mine. And then walks away. And so... Churchill's like, wait a minute there, Stalin. Stalin now, er, stops. Turns slowly like a fucking robot and menacingly stares at him. He's like, sir, what about Berlin? Stalin's like, what about it? It's behind my line. It's mine. And he's like, but sir, it's such a big city. You can't just completely communize that. It's like an economic powerhouse. And like, uh, Stalin's like looking like over him. He's like, Tipo's on him. I think we should all kind of chip in and take over Berlin to kind of like help it integrate into your society. It sounds like <sighs> takes out his pen, takes Berlin itself, draws a circle around it, carves it into three like triangles. This section of Berlin is his, and then this is like France's, this is England, and this is then the American can help out here, and then he walks away. So it God, it must have fucking sucked to live like one house over into the Russian one. Oh, that would sh oh fuck! Cause you know the American one's got like rodeos and shit built in it, and the France one's got like all these tiny like uh, wh whatever that tower in France is called, <laughs> the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah, they got like thirteen of mini miniature Eiffel towers like stuffed with baguettes, and then the one like within five minutes of being carved up into the Russian one, it's just covered in ice. It looks like fucking Metro twenty thirty three. So how does it feel to be completely one hundred percent accurate, Ted? Uh. No different than every other second of my life. All right, so let me let me explain the setup. So he takes this large part of like basically the of Europe, but in this small little pocket over like miles into the communist se the sector is Berlin, which has a communist sector and then like a free sector. Right, it's cut in half. So like I wish I had a map for you right now, but like here's Germany. And then, like, here's, like, Germany right here, like, in half, all red up to Russia, right? All red, but this little circle that's, like, blue. Kind of like how uh, Hong Kong is in China. Yeah. Where Hong Kong is is its own autonomous leader, and then, you know, that just stopped happening. That just wasn't a thing anymore recently. Yes, it was. And then everyone stopped caring, because Hong Kong's all the way over there. But, but Hong Kong's an island, though. It's far away. Like, Berlin is in the middle, so it's, like, it's landlocked. Hong Kong's not an island, is it? Yeah, it's a little island off, uh, off like, the south. Shit. But uh, that, that's why it was so easy to, to make it still, uh, like, keep its own control. But, like, Berlin is in the middle of everything, right? Like, you you are in your, like, free sector. You look over to the left, there's the communist sector. Look over to the right, there's, another, there's more communist sectors. You're kind of stuck in here now. So here was Stalin's plan. You see, Stalin didn't like that there was this free little half circle just, just you know, fucking scribbling his paper. Taunting him. Yeah, taunting him. Haunting him. Because, remember, he believed in communism more than anything as you can see how effective it's been working for him so far as everyone's dying behind him and everything's on fire he could not have this in his territory he needed it removed 
How do I remove it? Hmm. He starts planning. How do I kill this last shred of hope within my borders? Yes. So, Churchill... Fucking Lord Sauron. Jesus. So, Churchill and the goons and the boys are like, okay, we gotta we gotta bring Berlin and, like, Germany back. We can't just let them all just, like, suffer and, and shatter. Now, you've probably heard the meme of, like, Germany after World War II. There was a story I was told in history, so I assume it was told in your history, too, when I was a teenager. Was, uh, there was this guy with a wheelbarrow full of, uh, what were they called, Deutschmarks, I think it was German money. Uh, he had a wheelbarrow full of it, and he left it, like, on the side to go, like, take a piss or something. And when he came back, someone dumped out all the money and stole the wheelbarrow, because the money was worth nothing. Everything sucked at this, this post-war defeat. So everything went to shit in Germany, and so they wanted to introduce a new form of currency that was backed by American currency to kind of bring everything back up. Stalin was not told about this, though, because remember, the Communist Party, the Communist system, is no money. No currency. You know, all, all distribution of food. So Stalin, you know, like the, like an evil goon just, you know, neck snap, whoosh, turns around and says, You were doing what behind my back? Well then. All right. Let's see how it fucking is. You, you fucking, you know, capitalist pigs are working against me, huh? Well, we'll see about that. He, go, he somehow gets to the money-making machine and just fucking pulls the fucking crank on it and prints out bazillions of dollars and completely crashes that new currency. So now everyone in <laughs> Germany, everyone in Berlin is fucked again. So Stalin now gets fucking fed up. He did not like that little fucking backstage bullshit. Fuck that. He puts a barricade. Because remember, it is a, it's a circle, right? It's a, it's a pocket within his territory. So on the outer rim that he still controls, puts up massive barricades and roadblocks. Now nobody can get into the free sector. Then he builds a gigantic wall over the, over the city itself between his sector and their free sectors, right? So now they are completely walled off from the, like, the right and barricaded off from the left. The people in Berlin are now completely fucked. They can't get anything because i can't go because they would get food from like trucks and shit can't get them anymore blanket well, well, barricaded out can't get from trains anymore barricaded out stalin is they've been turned into the kowloon walled city yes he is he, his plan is to starve them out because they will eventually give up and surrender and accept stalin's fucking rule thus making that so that free sector just one whole capitalist berlin city that's his plan Starving them out because that's just what Stalin likes to do is starve people. It's his greatest weapon. Is, is uh, Did you say a capitalist Russian city? No, no, no communist. It's a communist. Okay. One, one communist okay. fucking uh, shithole. So nobody liked that plan. Nobody. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 Churchill and the goons and the boys were like, "Dude, that's fucked. You can't do that, Stalin." Stalin says, "What are you gonna do about it? Gonna, gonna fucking bring in people in here?" He's like, "Well, yeah, we need to feed our people. Like those are our sectors." He's like, "Well, if you cross my territory." That's an act of war, bitch. You want to fucking fight with me? You want to fight the whole USSR? And they're like, Ugh, damn it. Like, they just got out of the war. They don't want to fucking put another one. They don't, no one wants to go into another one, right? They just got out of World War fucking two. Like, this is like a couple of months after. No one wants to do this shit anymore. So they all back down. But they have to have a plan. How do they see Because these people are under their, like, rule, right? They're under their protection. They can't just let them die. And they can't just let Stalin do what, they, what he wants because that makes them look weak, right? So, yeah. they had a plan. What if we fly food there? Because think about it. He said if we, like, we're not going through the barricade. And we're just flying over to our, our own controlled territory. We're not technically breaking any laws. Stalin is like, hold it there. If you fly a plane over that sector, that's an act of war. And I'll have my anti-aircraft shoot you down. And, he, and then they're like... Would you really, though, would you really shoot down a cargo plane that's simply delivering food to our controlled territory? Someone's like, he, he clutches his hand, shit. Because think about it, if it's not a military plane, you shoot it down, you just look like a bad guy. And Stalin can't look like a bad guy, because you know, he's really good at doing <laughs> Stalin that. Stalin can't look like a bad guy. Uh, I, okay, let me uh, I gotta explain something. I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, let me explain. I can explain. <laughs> so anyway... They do the Berlin airlift. This is a huge, fun story. I'm going to go into it. Where they start flying planes in with a bunch of food to you know, feed all the people here. They math it all out. Like, it would take, like, you know, 200 flights, you know, 15-minute stops, immediately get a new pilot. You know, they're writing it all down. This is the only way we'll keep this, because it's a big fucking city. The only way we can keep these, the sector of the city still fed through this whole time. 
And they're like, all right, let's do it. So Stalin, he doesn't shoot because he, you know, he realizes he can't do that. But he's like, okay, 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 you know what, what? They can do their thing because you know what? He puts his little scarf on, winter is coming. And you can't fly planes that good over in winter here. Mm-mm-mm, this ain't gonna work. I'll just wait him out. You know, his second greatest weapon is waiting for winter. So, winter hits. But they don't have to go that far. Into, they're, they're going to Berlin and back. They're not going well, into yeah, Russia Well, yeah, but you're still winter. flying way high up in the sky in European-ass winter. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's cloudy. Remember, this is, this is the forties. Technology was a lot worse. So fun little stories. They were using really old shitty, like I think B2 bombers to carry all these planes. Well, they, they stripped all the weapons out of, of course, but they were, uh, filled with flower dust and shit and filled with a bunch of, uh, highly explosive and flammable material. Never one exploded though, but it was just a dangerous thing. People weren't sleeping. They were just flying over there. It was chaotic. But what they were doing is they were getting all the Luftwaffe guys who were expert fucking pilots to help with this whole thing. So they were getting jobs going, they were getting all this thing going, and there was this guy, we'll call him Johnny, Johnny Goodsmile here. He was making unauthorized drops over Berlin. They pulled in like, what the fuck are you doing? Turns out he was making little bags of candy with little parachutes and throwing them out of his window, giving the little kids on the fucking, like, schoolyards. So now, everybody loved this thing, because Johnny here was just being literally a good person. So, like, this is great! They look at Stalin, like, Stalin, what the fuck are you doing? And Stalin's like, God damn it! So now Stalin looks like a bad guy, and he's just, <laughs> fuck! And so he gives up, and he just fucking leaves. He keeps the wall up, you know, he fucking, like, scribbles over it. This is still mine, though. But he lets go of the barricade, and lets people just get food normally now. Because he realizes, like, by starving these people out, and everyone knows what he's doing. Like, once, you know, once Johnny Goodsmile started handing out candy, it was done. So Stalin retreats. Yeah, now the optics were on him. Yeah. And after World War II, everyone's, like, on lookout for you know hey let's fucking not do this shit and if people do that they're gonna stop taking imports and exports and then they're gonna be completely fucked yeah yeah, yeah. so he loses there backs off keeps you know, keeps his sector though you know, he, this is still mine everyone sucks living over there in that berlin but uh he, he retreats back and he goes back to his fucking little hidey hole and he's like well this sucks everything sucks everything blows this isn't even fun anymore i can't you can't just fucking throw people in the gulag Stalin actually gives up, and he retreats to his summer home and just says, fuck it, you guys are the Communist Party. Then they come to his house. Stalin says, are you here to kill me? And they're like, no. He's like, why? He legitimately asked the most interesting question that it makes me really evaluate his entire, like, character. He says, why aren't you going to kill me? I was supposed to lead Russia to a new prosperous like age, and I fucked it all up. And they said, Stalin... There's literally no one else who can rule Russia anymore. Just please, just come back here and just rule shit. He's like, I, if you fucking insist. So he goes back to being, you know, the supreme overlord and starving people out like usual. Yeah, he, he, he has that one brief moment of, like, of morally reflecting on himself. And then goes back to being evil real quick. So, he's really old now. Stalin is almost 70 now. He's an old-ass man. He's essentially fucked everything up in Russia at this point. He's... Unleash an entire wave of terror, a new terror that was inspired by Ivan himself, as he's quoted saying, he made everyone in this sector, in you know, Berlin, in Russia, scared. Because anyone can sell you out to, to his goons. You don't know who you can trust. That's exactly the way Stalin liked it. He loved everyone scary, being, uh, being scared of him and fearing him, thus giving him more power. Made his, big, made his dick real fucking big. He was just exuding over everybody for all of this time. But all of his policies are going to officially bite him in the ass now. You see, Stalin suffered a stroke. And he fell in his room while he was listening to music and died. Well, he was dying. So, here, here's the story. This is actually a very comedic little thing that's, that's put into the death of Stalin. So, they hear Thud, his two goons. They're like, should we go in and check on him? He said, no, dude. He told us not to fucking go in there no matter what. If we go in there, we're dead. They're like, okay. And so they never go in there to check on him. <laughs> so, the next day happens, and they still haven't heard anything from Stalin. 
So one of his guys comes in like, yo, where's Stalin? He's like, he's in his room. He hasn't come out. He's like, you guys didn't check out? He's like, you told us not to. Bitch, let me in. And they yell at him. Stalin's just sitting there unconscious in a pile of his own piss. They're like, oh, Hell yeah. fuck, what happened to him? They grab him, they put him on shit, like, is he alive? What the fuck? They're like, they slap him, trying to wake him, like, Stalin, Stalin, are you okay? Oh, fuck. Like, get the, get the goons, get the boys. They, they call it, they, they get Malenkov in, they get Levente, they get fucking Khrushchev in, they get the fucking everybody. They get fucking Vasily. Like, oh, fuck, what happened? What happened? Well, let's call a doctor. Like, okay. Hey, guess what? What? We killed all the doctors, dumbass. There aren't any doctors left. Look what we do. The doctors kept telling us that everyone was going to die, and then we killed all the doctors and everyone died. It was probably because we didn't have the doctors. Like, oh, fuck, what do we do? So, Levente here, remember Mr. Psychopath Womanizer guy, he, so this is, might not be true, but it's funny, so I'm going to bring it up anyway, because after all, this is somewhat accurate history. I don't have to be 100% accurate. (laughs) He opens his journal and he recites Lenin's favorite joke, or Stalin's favorite joke. No, worse. He goes over to Stalin, whispers into his ear, and says, I'm so happy you're dying, old man. Fuck you. I'm gonna take your fucking country, and I'm gonna fucking ruin it. I'm gonna ruin all your little policies. I'm gonna make my own fucking communist Russia. Just despite you. Stalin wakes up. Stalin opens his eyes and sits up, and Leventi goes like, oh shit, oh, oh, he, he, he leans down, grabs his hand, starts to kiss it, like, mm, mm, I'm sorry, mm, please forgive me, mm, I love you, Stalin, mm. Stalin, Len, then, like, you know, passes back out, he, Leventi stands up, spits on him, says, fuck you, old man, I fucking hate you, I'm so glad you're fucking dying, you piece of shit, and he did this in front of everybody in this big show, so, nobody respected Leventi after that moment, everyone thought he was dumb, and, oh, stupid coward, so... Everyone saw his son wake up. They're like, okay, he could be saved. Let's get the doctors out of the gulags and get them in here. So they go slowly through the process of getting all the, the doctors on gulag and get them all together. And they're like, okay, we're happy you all gave us our jobs back. But this is kind of too little too late. If we're, he suffered from a stroke and his brain is suffocating and he's brain dead. He's basically dead now. And they're like, well, like, we'll do brain surgery on him. Like, well, we can't just look. They probably like, do brain surgery on him. And like, okay. So they, they, they come up with stuff. <laughs> I sure stuff. hope they have the lu- the 10 luck stat like they do in New Vegas to operate on fucking Caesar. So, <laughs> unfortunately, they don't. They, they, they cut Stalin open. They're like trying to like, like the guys who like, he's fucked. He, he's dead. Remember that old play? I think it was a PlayStation 2 ad where like there was the brain surgeon. He was like poking the guy's head and he was like, Dan-. no, I think it was Capri Sun. I don't remember. Someone was poking someone's brain. They were dancing around the room. Yeah, pretty much. They're just mess- they're just like put on a show just because they-, they know he's fucked, right? They're doctors. They're exp- they're experts, and the the guys aren't. So this is also put in the movie, which I don't know how true it is, but it is. Uh, I- it's a fun movie, so I'm just gonna quote it anyway. So Stalin has a son named Vasily Stalin. Not to be confused with the Vasily, you know, Blokin, the the killer, a different guy named Vasily. So his son Vasily was a bit of a loser. Stalin didn't like his son. Thought he, he thought he was, you know, disrespectful, uh, shitty, you know, a goon. He, he, he had no ambition. He sucked. He didn't like him at all. The silly comes in here. He's telling his goons about him like, oh, God, could you imagine raising someone to be a goon? How disrespectful. So, Vasily comes in there drunk and shit, like, what are you doing to my father? You're all plotting against him. <laughs> and they're like, Vasily, please stop being, making a fool of yourself. He's like, <laughs> they grab him, like, they throw him out. He, they throw him out, he, like, tumbles down, he's, like, crying and shit. So, uh, yeah, no, and they all thought he was stupid, weak, and, uh, dumb, and he could never rule the party now. So he made an ass of himself in this situation. And he was basically just kind of, he wasn't killed, but he was... Basically, uh, politically killed, I should say, you know, like nobody cared about him anymore after that, 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 that show of, uh, show of weakness, I want to say it is. They're like animals, Tad. So Stalin is now officially declared dead. The doctors are then re-gulagged and they do this big funeral for him where now all of his goons have a new, new idea. Who's going to be in power now? Cause it can't be Vasily. He sucks. Levente? Well, he's a psychopath. Oh, I know. I know. It'll be fucking Malenkov. Malenkov's pretty good. Stalin liked this guy. And so they start arguing with each other. Then Khrushchev, Mr. K- Mr. Jokey Man, comes in. And he says, no, 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 guys. I want to be in power. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Is that in your joke book, buddy? He's like, oh, no. I'm dead serious. And they're like, oh, my God, I think he's think actually serious. And so this is where, where the, the movie, if you ever watched it, The Death of Stalin takes place, where they, they start doing this, this whole big uh, thing. But I'll cover that in a, in a future episode because we're already at the one hour mark. And The Death of Stalin is... Basically a story in of itself, because he was such a powerful <laughs> figure and did so much shit. 
But before we close this out, I actually want to do a little bonus story that I almost forgot to mention. Uh-oh. And it's going to be very short. I, I, I just didn't want to not cover it. So, remember how everyone... Is it about the, is it about the photographs getting doctored? Because you didn't mention those. Oh, well, I was going to talk about the propaganda. So, technically, yes. So, okay. you were probably wondering, if Stalin was doing all this evil shit, why didn't anyone, like, do anything about it? So, obviously, the people who were in power were scared of him, because you never know who you could trust, but the people, even though they were scared of him, still loved him. Because, well, loved him in air quotes, because of a massive propaganda campaign by the Stalinist regime, that any problem that was happening wasn't because of the Communist Party making fucking, you know, popping boners and making whoopsie doodles. It was because those fucking assholes over there across the border, those fucking capitalist dogs, are to blame for all of Russia's troubles. It's everyone else's fault, not ours. Stalin, like, here's this nice photo of him, you know, shaking hands with kids with a big smile on his face. Here's this doctored photo of him sitting next to Lenin. After all, Lenin's the one who saved Russia from the fucking Romanovs and shit. Lenin likes this guy. Now, again, that photo, I showed you it too, was completely fake. Lenin did not like Stalin very much because he thought he was a goon, just a fucking thug, and put him in that desk job, you know? But he has to make the, he has to make the message that everyone loves him. You ever hear of 1984? That whole, you know, every document is forged, history has been rewritten, all that bullshit. Basically, that's what the Stalin regime was doing. 1984 is pretty much just based on that. It was everyone's job to doctor these photos. You've, you've all seen the meme of the one guy who you sit there on the boat with, he removes the other guys, then just removes the guy in the boat. There's a picture of him, like, at a table. Here, you like, this is the, the photo, then they remove other ones. But I've heard this really crazy theory, which might be a little crazy, but that... Anything that we see for the propaganda is propaganda of the propaganda. What do I mean by that? I mean that the Stalinist regime was so thorough, they're only telling you the message that you want to want to hear, that the purges were even more crazy and in-depth than you are being shown. Which, I mean... So, so you mean like the, like with the doctor photos, that there's other photos of him that were like, oh, okay, you know, this one's a real photo where he's sitting with these few people. It's like, nah, that shit, that shit fake. Like, but what I mean is, is that so say there's, there's you know, Jimmy here that he cut out from that picture of the boat, right? He's gone, and everyone knows that one. There was never a Jimmy. That was bullshit that we told you so you would fear Stalin just erasing you. Hmm. I don't know. I don't believe that. I feel like that's a waste of resources. But then again, that's what that entire country was? Waste of resources? 300 executions per day, Ted. They like to waste a lot of fucking time and people. But another fun story... Another really short one. So this one's brought up a lot. I just want to bring it up too. So remember how everyone was afraid of him. They respected him. They 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 still feared him, right? One night, one just random night, Stalin. I think this is actually in the movie too. Stalin's listening to his little fucking radio. He's you know the little old timey fucking you know nineteen fucking like thirty eight radio. And here's this listening to Stalin FM. Yeah, well, welcome the to best the, tunes east of Berlin. Welcome to the USSR 98.5, where we like to starve and listen to good tunes. So, so there's this beautiful song that was playing. Someone's like, hmm, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, I could I could write horrible policies to this. Yeah, you know, lo-fi fucking USSR beats to starve and study to. And so when it's over, Stalin puts out his phone, calls that radio company, and it's like, hey, can I get the recording of that? I really liked that. So the, the, the head the Mr. Radio was like, holy fucking shit, are you actually Joseph Stalin? And he's like, oh, yes, I am. And I do expect that recording at my doorstep by Monday. See you later. And hangs up. And the guy shits his pants. He's like, holy shit. Oh, fuck. Because here's the problem, Tad. They didn't record that. They didn't think Stalin would do, you know, would be listening to their random radio station and then call him five minutes later. So he, you know, he sent everyone home for the day. Because what they did is they recorded it, recorded it, they, they played it live because it's, it's the 40s, it's the 30s and 40s, right? They just played it live with like a microphone to the radio station. They didn't record shit. So he puts out his suit. He's still in his pajamas because he was, you know, sitting, he was getting to bed. He gets a suit on, just runs out and knocks on every single door. He's got a business suit, but he still has a little sleepy cat. Yeah, he starts knocking on every single door of everyone that was at work that day. He says, guys, 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 
if we don't re-record that song with the exact same sound decibel and same, you know, everything, we are all going to die. They're like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, Stalin called me. Please, just, please, we gotta fucking do this. So, like, at fucking, like, 1 a.m., they get together, re-record the song, you know, and put this time, put it on a fucking record, the exact same way, at least they, they assume is the exact same way, fucking, you know, Monday, hand it to Stalin, Stalin listens to it, he's like, yeah, yeah, this is just as good, ah, these recordings are good, this is, oh, this is just as good as when I heard it, he's like, oh, thank God, he's like, what do you mean, oh, thank God, I mean, yeah, 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 it's just, it's, it's exact recording, okay, bye, and then he just, he fucking runs out of there. Stalin... That it happened, by the way. That actually happened. Stalin put, without knowing, just put that guy through hell. And I think it's just a really fun little story of, like, showing I, how the people, like, how much they feared him, right? I genuinely thought he was going to go, like, this is a great trick. It's bopping. Go to the gulag. I don't want anyone else to hear this song ever again. It's only for me. <laughs> go to the gulag. You will be my private musician. In the gulag. No, Stalin had had mercy on this guy for some reason. I guess he just really liked that song. I don't even know what song it was, too, but he fucking loved it. But anyway, the TLDR, that's Stalin. Now, of course, I summarized, like, 30 years of this guy, like, ruling the country and then dying. So, of course, there's some things that I had to omit, but that's just the way it goes. You know, it's like how Bill Wirtz did, I did like, a thousand years of history in 20 minutes, right? You gotta, you gotta summarize some shit. But... I wanted to give him his own, his very own episode because he's such a figure. Everyone knows him. You could see Stalin, just, you know who that is. He's a huge figure in Russian history and world history because he pretty much just fucked everything up everywhere for like communism. And when you think of communism, you think of the Stalinist regime. And he was so evil that him and Hitler are basically the de facto things that you're, uh, brain will go to if you're like a creator for making like a villain and something you, you those two guys when you think of evil are going to be those two guys they're the guys who had the, you know the big militaries conquering everything uh this whole cult of personality they're just nasty fucking people and i fucking love just reading about just like all this shit he had so much power right like he could just do all and he this was shit. pretty he was he made it so that he was completely unchallenged yes he was able to do anything he wanted no one could stop him it's like if you gave a small like child a country to run and they constantly were throwing tantrums but they were like targeted tantrums i guess it's scary alex here's here's what i have to say about this as the final thing Aren't you so fucking happy you were born in the United States of America? I mean... Holy shit. Looks over at Florida's coronavirus rates. I don't know, boss. Looks over to the right. Look, looks over to a 10... It costs $10 to make a cure for the coronavirus. The, the pill costs $3,000. Looks back in the center. I don't know, boss. We've got some fucking right, but problems. Consider this, that. Alex. Do you want a slice of pizza pie? Uh... Looks over at police brutality. Hey guys, we should fix the police brutality and have reforms. Hey guys, we removed the word whitening from toothpaste. Hey, can we have some police <laughs> reforms? Hey guys, Black Lives Matter. We're gonna we're gonna recast the voice of Cleveland Brown. Can we please have police reforms? Hey guys, we listened. We care. We're gonna rename this street after a black person. Can we please have Can some have police, police reform? reforms? It's okay, guys. We understand. We got rid of it, Jemima. <laughs> Listen, we've got our own problems, Tad. I know, but I am not in a gulag for recording a podcast and saying Aunt Jemima was a fucking syrup lady. <sighs> well, anyway, you're not a gulag speaking of yet. syrup ladies... <laughs> Uh, you can find the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Uh, I've, I've started to turn the corner on Spotify. I didn't have it installed for a long time. I knew people used it, so I, like, I was throwing the podcast up on there. Uh, it's not the worst. Uh, using Spotify for music is basically torture, uh, but podcasts is not too bad. I kind of like it. It like keeps track of your podcast. It's not, it's not that bad. Um, there's also a Discord in the description, Patreon in the description. All that good, good stuff. Uh, buy Bug Fables. It's a good video game. Um, I'm going to have something else that I'm going to be shilling soon uh, related to, to Joe Buck Ooh. and all of his uh, his bullshit. They do a podcast. It's called The Man With No Brain. It is really funny. 
Uh, it is Joe and Ryan fighting. The first episode spends 10 minutes of them just berating Joe for being a shithead. It's pretty good. So, uh, Alex, what's your what's your last things you want to say for to close out the episode? Once again, because obviously this is just one aspect of history that I care a lot about, and I actually have a planned closing statement. Mao Zedong, a.k.a. Mao Zin Dimadong, you know, big, big wig Mao himself, actually has a quote about Stalin. Mao said Stalin was 70% good, 30% bad. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> hey, listen, C's get degrees. <laughs> good night, everybody.